In this video, we're going to talk about curve fitting, which is essentially the same thing as creating a line of best fit. From doing so, we're going to be able to approximate new data points or just data points in general based off of the overall trends of our data. So a line of best fit is just some sort of polynomial that best fits your data. Best fit meaning that um, the distance between your data points and the actual line itself is minimized. So for instance, let's say I had some data that looked like um, this. There's a point, 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 there's a point down here, there's a point down here. Okay, so I have this data and I want to create a line of best fit. And let's say I wanted to create a first order line of best fit. So notice I have some outliers. I have this point over here that's an outlier and I have this point that's an outlier over here. So that's going to change my line of best fit, but overall all of my data is kind of going in one general trend. So if I wanted to create a first order line, it might look something like this. Okay, so it best fits my data um, and it's a first order line. However, I can also create a second order line that might look something like this, right? And it, it fits my data even better. Um, and so, so on and so forth, I can create different orders of polynomials that um, best fit my data. And we can use this later on in order to approximate new values based off of the overall trend of my data. The two functions that help you do curve fitting are polyfit and polyval. And so I like to think of these two functions as kind of like the couple of MATLAB. They're in their honeymoon phase and you rarely see one without the other because what one outputs is what the other one needs as an input. It's actually a beautiful, beautiful love story. Um, but let's go into this a little bit more. So polyfit, the purpose of polyfit, oh, I guess I'm gonna write it in green, polyfit, is it fits a polynomial to your data. So the name of the function helps you remember what it's supposed to do. So in order to fit a polynomial to your data, there's a couple of things that you need to know. The first one is what's your data. So the first two inputs are your X and Y values of your data. And then lastly is the order of the polynomial that you want to fit. So the last one is the order. And so this is like a first order, second order, third order, so on and so forth. And so polyfit, what it does is it outputs what we call a coefficient vector. So I will abbreviate that as coefs. And so this coefficient vector is a vector of numbers that represents a polynomial. So let's go into that a little bit more. So let's say for instance, my coefficient vector was two, three, five. What this is saying is this is representing the polynomial two uh, x squared plus three x plus five. Okay, so you should be able to go from a polynomial to a coefficient vector and a coefficient vector to a polynomial. So let's try another example. Let's say I had 4x cubed plus 2x minus 7. Okay, so let's say this is my polynomial. The coefficient vector representation of this would be first, I would have um, my 4 for my third order. And then notice here my polynomial does not have a second order term. That's because it's um, multiplied by 0. So the coefficient vector or the coefficient value of the second order um, term is zero. Then the first order term is two and the last one is negative seven, okay? And so I have to include that zero because if I didn't, if I had something like four, two, negative seven, this now represents the polynomial four x squared plus two x minus seven, which is not the same thing as what we had before. Okay, so you should be able to go from coefficient vector to polynomial, polynomial to coefficient vector. It's also important to note here that uh, are the relationship between the length of the coefficient vector and the order of your polynomial. 
So in this case here, let's do a different color. In this case here, my coefficient vector was length three, but my order was length two. In this case here, my length of my coefficient vector was four, the order of my polynomial was three. So there's a pattern going on here where the length of your coefficient vector is always equal to your order plus one. Order of your polynomial plus one. Okay? And that's because of that zeroth order term or that constant term. Okay? So that's polyfit. And then polyval uh, does exactly what the name of the function would cause you to think it does. It plugs in values to your polynomial. So for instance, if I had polyval, so it takes in it takes in a coefficient vector. So let's say I had um, two, three, five, and then it takes in new x values. So let's say this was one, zero, two. And what it outputs are new y values. So essentially what it's doing is it's plugging in the numbers one by one to your polynomial. So remember this polynomial that's represented here is the 2x squared plus 3x plus 5. So what it's going to do is it's going to take a 1 and plug it in to each of the x's. So if I were to plug in a 1 to there, I would get 2, 1 squared plus 3, 1 plus 5, right? So that's the same thing as 2 plus 3 plus 5, which is 10. Okay, so my new y, my first value would be 10. I think I did that math right, hopefully I did that math right. And then so the next one, 0, is just plugging in zeros for all of those values, so therefore I would get back 5. And the last one is plugging 2 into all those values. So what's that? So that it would be, let's do a different color. That would be 2, 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 5. Oh, I got a math. So 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 6 plus 5. So that's 11 plus 8. So that's 19. Hopefully that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, so then this last term here would be 19. If it's wrong, that, that's kind of embarrassing, but oh well, math is hard. So yeah, so polyval, it takes in a coefficient vector and it outputs the actual values that's being plugged into it. So notice here, this is why I was saying it's kind of like the couple because the output of polyfit is what we then can use as the input to polyval. We create a polynomial, by fitting a certain polynomial to our data, and then we can plug in new values in order to find out, uh, new x values in order to figure out new y values. The last topic we're gonna to talk about is the highest order unique best fit polynomial. And so I will abbreviate this as HABUF, just because I don't feel like saying that a whole bunch of times. Um, and so the highest order unique best fit is just exactly as it sounds. It's the highest order polynomial that is unique to your data. So notice in all the other examples, when you create a line of best fit, it's not guaranteed to go through each point, right? There can be multiple um, first order lines that fit a data set that never cross through each point. There can be multiple second order data sets or polynomials that can fit a data set as well. It is not guaranteed that it goes through each point. However, when we're talking about the highest order unique best fit polynomial, this is the highest order polynomial that, that is guaranteed to go through each of your points in your data. So let's go over some examples here. So in this case here, let's say I had, let's say I had two points, okay? What type of polynomial fits these exactly where there's only one of those in existence? So the answer is a first order line. Okay. There's only one first order line that exists that, um, that goes through those two points exactly. There's some second order lines. You could have infinite second order lines that go through those two points. You can have infinite third order lines as well, but it's not unique. And so let's do another one. And I will draw this suggestively. So let's say I had 
three points like this. What type of polynomial best fits this data? And so that would be a parabola. Oh, let, let's see how the drawing skill would work out. Oh gosh, oh, I kind of missed the point. Let's, let's, let's fudge the point a little bit just so, oh wow, what fits perfectly. Okay, so then here now a second order line best fits these three points here. And there's only really one of those in existence that is guaranteed to cross through each point. There's some fourth order lines that can go through it, but there's infinite number of those. There's fifth order lines as well, but there's only one third or second order line that best fits this data exactly. And so let's create a little table here. So based off of my number of points and my highest order unique best fit, so the number of points in this first one were two, and the highest or unique best fit was a first order. In this one here, the number of points was three, and the highest or unique best fit was a second order line. So the pattern here is that the highest order, let's do this in a different color actually. Let's do it in red, because it's that important. So the highest order unique best fit will be equal to the number of points. Um, so I'll say the number of points minus one. Okay. And so people always ask, people always ask like, oh my gosh, Cantoine, you drew that second plot so suggestively. Technically, I could have had some points like this where I have three points that are in a line right there. And sure, a first order line fits those exactly. However, it's not guaranteed for any three points that a first order line will fit it exactly. However, it is guaranteed that for any three points, there exists some second order line that exactly goes through each point. All other lines, all other orders of polynomial are not guaranteed to pass through each point. And so that's the concept of the highest order unique best fit.